Southwest 3260 only tired, runway 24 right to line. Hello and welcome to the CAT 11 rating. At the time this video is being recorded, this is the final rating in the VFR communication airspace training series on the Pilot Edge network. And there are currently no plans to add more ratings, but I figured I would say that just in case we do add more, we'll keep the door open so this video age as well. Today we're flying from a Class Bravo airport to a Class Bravo airport. That's right, landing and departing at Class Bravo. So it's going to be Los Angeles International down to San Diego Lindbergh International Airport. It's about a 95 mile flight point to point and we are going to get right into it. You may notice we've got a new airplane today. I figured for the last rating of the series we'd hop in the Diamond DA-62 and have a little fun. So let's begin briefing this flight. As with all of these, make sure you are reading the textual briefing in the CAT-11 page that you see here on the screen. Make sure you read all that prior to watching this video so you know all about the flight before you learn the ins and outs of the briefings and what we're actually going to be doing. As far as the uh, flying the rating goes, flying from LA to San Diego, we are making sure we tell ATC we're flying the CAT-11 and we request flight following either in the air or on the ground. If you followed along throughout the series with me, you know that I prefer to ask for flight following on the ground whenever I'm given a choice. It's just a lot easier to get it straight from the time my wheels leave the ground rather than having to call SoCal Approach Airborne. And I risk not getting a word in on frequency because it's busy or just a lot, a lot of things can kind of go awry there. So it's just a lot easier, in my opinion, if you get it from the ground. Now there's two very helpful tips here and I'll go over them briefly. Number one is be aware that once you exit Class Bravo airspace, you may not re-enter it without obtaining another clearance. I'll show you why that's important here as we look at the sectional in just a minute. The second tip, and we talked about this a little bit in the CAT-10 as we were approaching the Bravo airspace for the VFR transition. Do not assume that your Bravo clearance is going to be granted to you. It may not be granted as early as you think. For instance, just because you're approaching the outer portion of the Bravo, maybe the highest most shelf or the, the furthest most shelf from the airport, doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you're going to get your clearance. Approach control or tower might not clear you into the Bravo until the very final shelf, that very inner shelf that surrounds the airport itself, especially because you're likely going to be flying something small, such as this twin diamond that we're in, or maybe even a Skyhawk. Remember that as a VFR aircraft, your Bravo clearance is a privilege. It's not a right, and you should not expect it at any time. You always need to have a backup plan in order to avoid the airspace. By now, I'd sure hope that you know all about airspace, but if you still need a refresher, check out that link in the top right of the screen. That'll take you to the Pilot Edge workshop video about airspace. Okay, now it's time to look at our route for today. And we're looking point to point right here, like I said, 95 miles. Now today I'm actually gonna be planning on navigating via the shoreline. And after we depart Los Angeles, it's kind of unknown what kind of departure instructions we're gonna get, but eventually I wanna get over to the shoreline and just kind of follow that down, just past Orange County. And now as we go along the route, we wanna be looking at airspace and the different types of airspace that could get us in trouble. Obviously the first one that we have is the Los Angeles Bravo. I talked about that first tip that's on the CAT-11 briefing page about not re-entering the Bravo once you've already left it. Remember, you need a new clearance to do that. So let's say we depart LAX and we make a turn to the south here. Now I'm actually going to switch over to the Los Angeles fly chart because that'll be a little bit more clear to you. That looks a lot cleaner, right? So we get over here, we're climbing through, let's say 4,000 feet here within the surface to 10,000 shelf. And then we make a left turn out to the southeast because like I said, we want to get to the shoreline. At that point, let's say that we are at 4,000 feet when we cross over this line. At that point, we are now out of the Bravo airspace because we were in it here when the surface of 10 shelf, we're at 4,000 feet. And let's say we're cruising up to 5,500 for our cruise altitude. So we cross over this line and we have now gone beneath the Bravo airspace because this shelf is 5,000 up to 10,000 and we are at 4,000 and climbing. So if we continue to climb up to 5,500 feet, we would then re-enter the Bravo airspace when we got to 5,000 feet, and that would be a violation of the class Bravo because we left it and we did not have clearance to re-enter it. Remember, the airspace is three-dimensional. It goes vertically as well. Just because you think you're trekking along and you're fine because the next shelf in front of you is eight to 10,000 feet, always know what's above and beneath you. So that is tip number one. With that being said, our cruise altitude is gonna be 5,500 feet today. That is what we're planning, 5,500 feet down to the southeast. We're gonna try and navigate via the shoreline. So we're just gonna to adapt to whatever kind of departure instructions we get out of LAX. Those could come from clearance delivery or they might come from the tower just as we take off. So you always have to be ready for that. So we'll eventually we'll find our way over to the shoreline, making sure we don't bust the Bravo along the way. 
Additionally, we want to be cautious of the class Delta airspace that is beneath the Bravo here. We have Torrance Zamperini Airport that's right here, a 2,400 foot Delta airspace, 2,400 feet and below. You also have Hawthorne airspace, which is 2,500 feet and below that just sits just south of Los Angeles Airport. Further, you have Long Beach Airport, 2,600 feet and below. Los Alamitos, 2,500 feet and below. And then, ah, we have a Class Charlie. Now, we are going to be getting flight following today. We already talked about that. So this Class Charlie really shouldn't affect us at all because we will be talking to SoCal Approach, who is the controlling entity, and we will be getting radar service with them, which means we will be in, in two-way radio communication. So this Class Charlie will actually not apply really to us at all. So the biggest thing to worry about here are the Bravo. Once we leave it, don't re-enter it and the class deltas. So continuing down to the south, we continue to look for more airspace threats and we're going to switch back to the world VFR sectional. Ah, what is this? So we talked about we're going to be navigating via the shoreline. We have a restricted area. You might recognize this from the CAT 6 rating where we talked about special use airspace. We've also run into a few other restricted areas that have been along our route of flight throughout the rating series. Now I said we want to navigate via the shoreline, so we have two options here. But before we even consider either of those options, let's go ahead and take a look at the San Diego TAC chart and read about this restricted area. So the one I'm concerned about is 2503 Alpha and Delta. That's the one along the shoreline here. So for over the shoreline, that's the one that we're going to be encountering. So we go over here to the left and we look for R2503 Alpha and there is Delta to 2000 feet. So Alpha appears to be quite low. However, ah, Delta takes the cake for the rest of it, 2,000 up to 11. So essentially, Alpha and Delta make up 11,000 feet down to the surface. You'll see over to the right here, intermittent bite NOTAM and 24 hours in advance. So that means that the higher of the two, the Delta, might actually be NOTAM to be cold or hot. So we can check the NOTAMs on that. Now Pilot Edge doesn't simulate the NOTAMs, but you can always just ask the controller. And then if we look at Alpha, well, that's in use between 6 a.m. and midnight every single day, which is the entire pilot edge operating hours. So we know it's in use for uh, 2,000 and below, most likely. Again, like we talked about in the CAT 6, sometimes these times can be off and they're not actually using it, even though it says that it's in use. So what we're going to do when we get over there, we have two options. We could either just bend out over the coast and miss the thing altogether, or... What we're going to do today is actually ask SoCal Approach what the status of R2503 Delta is. Remember, I don't really care about Alpha. Alpha is the, alpha is the low one. We're going to ask about R2503 Delta. And the chart does say to contact SoCal on these frequencies for activity status. We'll just ask the controller that we're currently talking to. We wouldn't go switch on our own to these frequencies. That's really only if you're not already in contact with ATC. So we'll continue southbound, and whether we get to uh, go through the restricted area if it's cold or just if we have to go around it, either way, we'll eventually join back up at the shoreline. Oh, we've got another class Delta airspace here. That's at 2,800 feet. At this point, we'll be well cruising at 5,500 feet, so that's not going to be a factor. We'll continue down the shoreline, and now we have the Bravo airspace. Now, this is the San Diego Bravo airspace, and this is a very unique Bravo airspace within the country because... It's not only a bit of a strange shape, it's very jagged and such, but it has so many different shelves. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we look at this shelf right here that's over the famous Torrey Pines Golf Course, it's just west of Miramar. So Miramar is actually the reason that this Bravo is, is so kind of funky. And if you look at this shelf alone, this piece right here, and let me go actually to the fly chart, it'll make a lot more sense to you. This piece right here is 1,800 feet MSL to 3,200 then it just takes a break. It says we're not going to be a Bravo anymore. And then the Bravo restarts at 6,800. It goes up to 10,000. So this is great though, because over the shoreline at 5,500 feet, here's the shoreline, we're going to right down here, right at 5,500. That takes us right through that portion where it's not a Bravo. Fantastic. That'll also duck us underneath this 6,800 to 10,000 foot shelf. And now, uh-oh, now we're going to have a problem. 10,000 down to 4,800 feet. So this is where we have to make a decision. Do we descend down to 3,500? Or do we bank on the fact that we're going to get cleared into the Bravo just west of Miramar? Well, I'm not going to bank on anything. So because of that, we're going to go back up here and we're going to begin our descent down to 3,500 feet, probably just as we pass Palomar. That's going to be our plan. We'll pass Palomar Airport and we'll start down to 3,500 feet. That will still keep us within this non-Bravo area within this shelf. We'll be at 3,500 here, and the Bravo ends at 32, and then it begins again at 68 if you're going low to high. 
And so we'll be at 3,500 tracking right through here. That'll put us beneath this 4,800 foot to 10,000 shelf. So that's great. We've got another class Delta that's Montgomery off of our east. That'll be fine. We'll be at 3,500. Montgomery starts at 29 and goes down from there. And then we will finally encounter San Diego Airport. At this point, I would hope that we're going to get a Bravo clearance. Again, though, we're not going to bank on anything. But at 3,500 feet, we'll be perfectly fine to just make a left turn out here to the east. And we can just kind of cruise on out there as far as we need to go. Hopefully, at some point, SoCal will be able to accommodate us and turn us in for landing at uh, San Diego. San Diego is currently in a west flow as they are 99% of the time using runway 27. Now, let me show you one of the main reasons that people fail the CAT 11 rating. And I'm going to go zoom out here to show you. So this is the point to point direct route from LAX to San Diego. And this is why you should not use this route. So let's just say we're sitting down here at Los Angeles right now. We put in GPS direct to San Diego. And we just decide we're just going to eventually just join back up with that magenta line. And the Charlie's no problem. So we don't have to care about that. You're true there. This misses the restricted area. Oh, what a great plan, right? This is fantastic. Well, guess what? You're going to have a problem at some point. Let's say you look at this Bravo. Oh, okay. 4,800 to 10,000. Well, that's no problem. We'll just descend down to 3,500. Okay. Well, unless you're going to hit this little tiny gap here, then 3,500 is going to put you right here in this 10,000 down to 2,000 shelf. That's a Bravo bust. Additionally, even if you do hit this little gap, oh no, more problems. You're in a 10,000 down to 800 foot. I'll go back to the fly chart so you can see this easier. So you really would need to be cruising at 1,500 feet, and that's you know right off the deck of the ocean in order to get beneath this piece of the Bravo. It's not your best option by any means. Uh, it's not safe. It's not a good idea to be cruising 1,500 feet, uh, you know, 10 to 20 miles off the shoreline. So that's uh, not, it's usually not the way you want to go. Now, that's not to say that you have to choose my method either. This is just the way that I'm electing to fly. The rating doesn't specify how you have to get to the Bravo. If you wanted to take the scenic route and head out to the east and come in from the east, that's perfectly fine. But you need to have some sort of plan. You need to have something in place so that you're not out here at 5,500 feet asking for a Bravo clearance. Your odds of getting a Bravo clearance that far out are pretty slim and again do not count on it and just my other piece of advice just know all these funky shelves here we talked about that 3200 to 1800 and 10,000 down to 6800 and then there's another weird one here just just south of Miramar shouldn't really be a factor for you but surface up to 32 Bravo takes a break again and then 4800 up to 10,000 so some really weird shelves there that you have to be aware of and just make sure you completely understand the Bravo airspace before you head down there. Okay, as for our cockpit prep, I'm going to get that all set up and we'll get back with you to uh, get ready to get out of here. Okay, I'm back with you now. All I've done is really get the ATIS and set the altimeter. We have information November. They are in a west flow, which means they're departing on the 24s and the 25s out of Los Angeles. Now, at this point, we need to revert back to the things that we've done in the other CAT ratings. And... We need to think about what we've done when we've departed airports where we want flight following off the ground. Uh, specifically, we usually will call the lowest controller on the totem pole. And in that case, uh, that would be Los Angeles clearance delivery today. Now, when you're departing a Bravo similar to a Charlie, you're always going to call that lowest controller, regardless of if you're getting flight following or not. So even if you choose to go the other way of getting flight following in the air, which again, today I'm getting off the ground, you're still going to call clearance delivery first. The only difference would be you wouldn't specifically request flight following when you call clearance. So I'm going to call clearance on 120.35. I've already got that tuned in. And we're going to ask for our uh, departure to the south with flight following. Central's clearance delivery, Diamond 210 Pop Echo is a DA62 slant golf. Request uh, flight following to the south down to San Diego Limburg. And we have information November. This is for the Cat 11. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, Los Angeles clearance delivery. Good afternoon. On departure, fly heading 250. Make a left crosswind departure at the shoreline to exit the Bravo airspace. Maintain VFR at or below 2,500. Departure frequency 134.9 or squawk 3464. On departure, we'll fly runway heading. We'll make a left uh, cross on departure at the shoreline at or below 2,500 feet. 134.9 and 3464 for Diamond Zero Pop Echo. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, Rebec, correct. You are cleared out of the Los Angeles Bravo airspace. And do for the catalog. Cleared out of the Bravo for Diamond Zero Pop Echo. Thanks. Well, you can see why you absolutely need to have that pen and paper at hand. 
So those were by far our most complex departure instructions that we've seen throughout any of the cat ratings so far. And we're going to discuss them right now. So the first instruction he gave us was fly heading 250. Easy enough. That's The runway heading is 251. So it's, it's right in there. Uh, the second instruction he gave us was at the shoreline, make a left crosswind departure. Now this ties people up a lot. Um, this, this really kind of confuses some people. And really it's just saying once you reach the shoreline, that's, you know, that's the beach where the sand starts before you hit the water, you'll make a left cross on departure. We've talked about pattern entry in the Cat 3. We talked all about the traffic pattern and the different legs of the traffic pattern. The crosswind departure is just a left 90 degree turn. And we will follow the shoreline to the south basically until further advised. If we bring up the sectional here, you'll kind of see why they do this. And actually I'll bring up the fly chart so it's nice and clean. So we're going to be departing likely 2-5 left or right. I doubt they would taxi us to the north. We're parked uh, down here on the south at the moment. So we'll make a, a westernly departure. We'll fly heading 250. And at the shoreline, again, that's the beach, we'll make a left 90 degree turn. That will essentially take us down the shoreline. We'll follow that until further advised. Now, essentially right when you make that left turn, we will exit Bravo airspace. You can see how tight this corner is here. So we may or may not get the notification that we're leaving Bravo from the tower. Um, they might switch us to departure. We'll just kind of have to see how that goes. We also got a departure frequency and a squat code. Those are two things that we are very familiar with at this point. So that'll be nice and easy. Um, and finally, after we completed the readback, the controller told us that we have been cleared out of the Los Angeles Bravo airspace. Now, this is a little bit of a, a formality for ATC they have to do. Obviously, we shouldn't get a takeoff clearance without a Bravo clearance, right? Because the second that our wheels leave the ground, we are in Bravo airspace. So that would be a pretty mean bait and switch on ATC's side by uh, clearing us for takeoff, but not giving us a Bravo clearance and then violating us for entering the Bravo. But it's a little bit of formality. Just make sure you get it at some point. It's not necessarily going to come from clearance delivery, but maybe you'll use a method on your kneeboard where you'll write Bravo clearance and put a big empty box there, and then you check it whenever you actually have that clearance. That way, regardless of when you get it, whether it comes from clearance delivery, ground control, or tower, you'll know that you have that clearance. So that if you get that cleared for takeoff from the tower, and that box on your kneeboard isn't checked, and you have not heard them give you that specific cleared into or cleared out of the Bravo, you need to question, verify that we are cleared into the Bravo. Again, it's a little bit strange because it'd be a, such a bait and switch if they were trying to maliciously do that to you, but they are supposed to give you a Bravo clearance, even if you're departing a Bravo. I'm going to finish with the cockpit set up here with all the instructions they just gave us, and I'll get right back to you and we'll get taxiing on our way. Okay, back in the uh, cockpit, here we are. I've got 250 bugged on the heading. I've got 2,500 on the altitude. And I've got ground on 121.75 with tower in the standby. Got our code in uh, the transponder, and we are squawking mode C. I also went ahead and updated our route on our sectional here. So we'll make a left cross on after departure and eventually find the shoreline. This is kind of still a, a gray area as to how this is going to go. It's going to depend on what approach uh, wants us to do but we'll just make sure that we miss Torrance Class Delta or ask uh, them if we are okay to enter it, but we'll be climbing well in that left cross and we'll be at 2500 by then, so we'll be above the Delta. And then we'll have to remember to ask about our 2503 Delta and we'll be well on our way. We'll make our descent as we get over to Carlsbad down to 3500. That'll slip us uh, right through the Bravo. As far as our taxi goes, we're located just down here at the FBO, so we can expect an easy taxi out to likely 25 left. And we're going to give them a call now. Los Angeles Ground, Diamond 210, Pop Echo at the South FBO. Ready to taxi with information November. Diamond 210, Pop Echo, Los Angeles Ground, right 25 left, taxi via Alpha Foxtrot. Runway 25 left, taxi via Alpha Foxtrot, Diamond 0, Pop Echo. Okay, we're approaching runway 25 left now. We're going to switch over to the tower and we'll get our departure frequency ready of 134.9. As I'm doing that, I'm doing a mental note, and uh, are we cleared into the Bravo? Yes, we received that clearance already, so we are ready for takeoff here. Essentials Tower, Diamond 210 Pop Echo is ready for departure on my 25 left. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, Los Angeles Tower, wind 25011, runway 25 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 25 left, Diamond 0 Pop Echo. And gear up. Okay, so we're holding that 250 heading. We're climbing to 1,500 feet or below. I'm sorry, 2,500 feet. We're climbing to 2,500 feet or below. 
and we are waiting for that shoreline. We're waiting to see the sand. When we see it, we're going to make a left cross on departure. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, radar contact, say altitude. We're leaving 800 feet, Diamond 0 Pop Echo. Diamond 0 Pop Echo, altitude checks. Okay, so that was our mode C verification. We've talked about that in previous CAT ratings, how ATC has to verify our mode C. And that way they know that our transponder and our mode C capability is talking to their radar appropriately so they can use our altitude for separation purposes. All right, I'm watching off my left wing. We're almost at the shoreline. We're so close. And all right, we're going to make that left turn now. So making that left cross on departure at the shoreline, we're just going to follow the shoreline down to the south here. Try and keep it nice and tight to stay over the shoreline. We overshot slightly. That's okay. Watch our altitude now as we're through 1,700 feet. And we're just going to get back over the shoreline here. Continue our climb up, Diamond up to... Diamond Zero Echo, leaving Bravo Airspace, contact departure. Good day. Over to departure. Thanks, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. All right, now notice what he said, leaving Bravo Airspace. Yeah, so he yeah, let yeah, us know that we've left the Bravo. The so this more. is the point where we cannot leave, we cannot enter Bravo Airspace again without a clearance. And realistically, there's no need for us to have to do that. Let's check on. SoCal Diamond 210 Pop Echo is off Los Angeles, 2,300, climbing to 2,500 along the shoreline. 210 Pop Echo, SoCal Approach, good afternoon, LA altimeter, 2870, cancel altitude restriction. Diamond Zero Pop Echo, thank you. Okay, so we're canceling the altitude restriction. However, do not let that bait you in to climbing up to 5,500. I'm going to bring up the fly chart for you again and show you once again why we can't do that. Because remember, we are right here. So we're underneath the 5,000 foot Bravo shelf. So we are going to climb to 3,500 and that will be a safe altitude for us to get away from that Bravo shelf. So we're climbing to 3,500 feet. And I'm also going to make sure that we can uh, turn on course too, because he canceled our altitude restriction. I'll ask him in just a second here. SoCal approach, was that one, two? SoCal zero, Diamond Zero Pop Echo, may we proceed on course? Zero Pop Echo, can resume on navigation now. Thank you, Zero Pop Echo. Okay, so I'm not sure if he meant to say that earlier or if it just worked out now when we said it, but um, resume on navigation slash on course is different than resume on uh, altitudes, resume appropriate altitudes. So I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same page there so that I didn't start turning when he wasn't ready for us to do so. We're at 3,500 feet now. We'll be overflying the Torrance Airport shortly, and I'm just going to kind of shoot this gap. This is pretty much exactly what we planned, actually. 128.1, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. So you can see a lot of workload initially on the departure, so you got to really be ready with your plan. you got to know exactly what you're going to be doing. SoCal Diamond 210 Pop Echo is 3,500. For 210 Pop Echo, SoCal Approach, good afternoon, John Wayne Altimeter, 2986. 2986, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. Exactly Zero what we Pop planned Echo. here. Okay, for traffic, oh, we got some traffic now. Miles southwest by altitude indicates 4,400. Type unknown should be no factor. Looking for traffic, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. We'll keep an eye out there. He did say no factor, but we'll still keep an eye out. Now we got some clouds coming up here that are going to pose an issue. Remember, we still have to maintain VFR at all times. So we're going to start a climb and probably a right turn out to the east here. Although we know there is some traffic out here. So we're going to be extra vigilant as we make this turn. I don't see any traffic there. We are still at or below 5,000. Don't forget. And yeah, we'll just be able to go north of these clouds. That'll be fine. Okay, so now we'll go back into the uh, fly chart so I can show you. It's really just what we planned. Just before we got to Torrance, we got own navigation. We started that right turn down to the southeast. Now we're deviating a little bit to the south because of the cloud cover. But other than that, it's exactly what we planned. We continue to look for that Bravo airspace. Remember, we're still beneath the 5,000 foot shelf. So we still need to keep it below 5,000 feet. And as we continue down to the southeast, we'll be uh, within the 8,000 and above and 7,000 and above shelf. So that'll be no factor at that point. So we just need to wait till we're a little bit further to the southeast. And then at that point, we'll be able to climb up to 5,500 feet. Now we're over the port of San Pedro, just about. And we can bring up the section one more time and point out where that is. So 
as we get over here, we'll actually visually know that we are clear of the Bravo airspace. And so we're going to look out here, and yes, we are clear of the uh, 5,000 foot shelf because we're over that port, and we're going to begin our climb up to 5,500. Okay, we've leveled off at 5,500. I let the autopilot take over for a while. We're going to go ahead and check our chart just to continue our situational awareness. We are just coming up on Orange County, which means Class Charlie. However, we're at 5,500 feet. So, not only are we already in two-way rated communication with the controlling entity of the Charlie, and we have a mode C transponder, i.e. we are permitted to enter the Charlie, but we are above the Charlie, so it's really no factor. As we pass John Wayne here, I'll go ahead and... Uh, talk to SoCal about R2503 Delta and we'll see if we're going to have to avoid that or if we can just continue tracking right along the shoreline if it's uh, cold at the moment. Remember that the restricted area is not like a MOA. Review the CAT 6 for those. Remember the restricted area is not like a MOA. We cannot go through it if we need specific clearance and you're really never going to get clearance unless you have a reason to for instance if you're a military or part of the operation that's going on within the restricted area so make sure you review the cat 6 if those are still unclear to you there's a really good cheat sheet briefing guide in the cat 6 briefing material all right so we've got uh, orange county off our left let's go ahead and inquire about the restricted area socal diamond zero pop echo requesting the status of r2503 delta for 210 pop echo it is cold Zero pop echo, appreciate it, thanks. All right, well that's fantastic. R2503 Delta is cold, which means that as long as we are above 2,000 feet, uh, we can traverse the, uh, the shoreline area through that piece of airspace just northwest of Oceanside. So we'll uh, just continue straight over the shoreline and we'll just follow it all the way down. Remember our next uh, change is gonna be when we get a beam Palmar report, we'll begin that descent down to 3,500 feet. So we're going to begin our briefing into San Diego at this time. Uh, we're getting really close to making this very minor bend in the uh, shoreline as we overfly the Oceanside VOR uh, area, Camp Pendleton. And then once again, we'll be looking for Palmar report off our left. That's going to be our reminder to begin descending to 3,500 feet. I did want to show you something, though. You'll notice I'm using the San Diego fly chart, which is also uh, what I've used uh, previously today in talking about some of the uh, Bravo piece of airspace. It's just a lot cleaner. You may recall in the Cat 9 we used a flyway and the flyways are all found on the fly charts. Well, you'll see the flyways here and actually we're following one. If you see this, right beneath our magenta line, this flyway says 6,500 and below. But I want to point something out is don't get lulled into the flyways being perfectly safe ways to transition airspace because look, 6,500, while that's okay here, the second that you get over this shelf, this is that funky shelf we looked at earlier, now if you're at, say, 2,500, which according to the flyway is a good way to do it, you're going to be within the 3,200 down to 1,800 foot piece of the Bravo airspace. So the flyway, remember from the Cat 9, is solely a recommendation as to where to fly and what altitudes, but that does not mean that you can just blindly follow those flyways and assume they're going to keep you clear of the Bravo airspace. Always be checking out those shelves, especially in a tricky Bravo such as San Diego. Continuing on with the briefing, once we get uh, near Palomar, we're going to pick up the ATIS and we'll get the ATIS for San Diego, verify they're in a west flow, in which case we can carry out our plan of 3,500 feet down here. We'll pass Del Mar Racetrack, we'll overfly the Torrey Pines Golf Course, at that point, we'll make sure we're solid at 3,500 feet to stay above that 3,200 foot Bravo that we'll be just on top of. And then we will continue down to Mount Soledad, which is just a little Zero mountain peak. So Cal Approach 119.6, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. So Cal Approach, Diamond 210 Pop Echo, 5,500. For 210 Pop Echo, So Cal Approach, the Limburg altimeter is 298. Niner 8 is victory. 2989, we're going to pick up Victor and uh, request uh, two minutes off frequency to get that. Zero pop echo. Zero pop echo, that's approved. Just let me know when you're back. We'll go. Uh, diamond zero pop echo. So we got approach. Diamond zero pop echo. Back on freak with Victor. Two and zero pop echo, Roger. All right, now that we have Victor, let's uh, proceed back with our briefing. They are landing on uh, runway 27, just as we expected, so that's perfect. Uh, over Mount Soledad, it's just a little mountain that we'll see as we get further down towards the airport. 
Uh, that will indicate that we are now in the area of airspace where we can start our descent even further. So once we pass Mount Soledad, we'll know that we're south of that funky shelf, that 3200 down to 18 shelf, so we can be our descent even further if we need to. Although I'm going to keep it above 3000 just to make sure that we don't hit the uh, delta out here for Montgomery. And at that point, we will make sometime between, I'd say, Del Mar Racetrack and Mount Soledad, we will make it known to SoCal that we would like a Bravo clearance and we will see what they think about that. They might tell us to continue south, they might give it to us. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, probably closer to Mount Soledad than everything is than anything is where we're gonna request that clearance. Uh, as far as our airport arrival goes, just while we're here, plan around my 27 and the GA ramp is on the northeastern corner of the field, so we'll plan for a right turn off. There's a displaced threshold as you see, so we can't land till here. We'll probably roll it to Charlie 5, if not Charlie 6, certainly turn off by Charlie 6, make a right turn and taxi via Charlie, likely then a hotel into the FBO. That's the taxi plan there. And we're going to get 18.3 ready on the tower, just in case this ends up being our last approach frequency. We'll just get the tower ready on 118.3. All right, we're keeping an eye out for traffic as always. And I know we're also approaching the Carlsbad Palomar area, which is our reference point to begin our descent down the 33rd is. So we're going to pass the Palomar airport. We'll just pass the runway, wait till it's off our left wing, and then we're going to let SoCal know that we're starting down to 3,500 feet. That'll give us plenty of time to get down to uh, 3,500 before we get to the shelf that lays above Mount Soledad, which begins at 4,800. So that's really the only shelf that we need to worry about missing right now. And we also want to make sure we don't blow through our altitude at 3,500 and hit that lower 3,200 foot Bravo. Okay, Carlsbad Airport is just off the left wing now, so we are going to start down to 3,500. We'll let SoCal know. SoCal Diamond Zero Pop Echo leaving 5,500 for 3,500. For Zero Pop Echo, Roger. For 2 Zero Pop Echo, report over Mount Soledad at 3,500. Report over Mount Soledad at 3,500, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. Okay, level here at 3,500, and you heard ATC tell us to report over Mount Soledad. So, they likely know our intentions to enter Bravo airspace already, just because our flight plan shows we're landing Limburg. So at some point we need a Bravo clearance to get to Limburg, uh, San Diego International Airport. But we are still going to um, let them know uh, about our intentions here as we get over Mount Soledad, and we'll make that report. All right, we're just overhead famous Torrey Pines Golf Course. I dipped the wings so you can see that off to the left. And we'll bring up the fly chart so you can see where that puts us. So we are now officially in that funky area of the Bravo. We are 300 feet above the Bravo as we sit here at 3,500 feet. And Mount Soledad will be our next uh, reporting point up here just off the nose. And that's where we will call approach, let them know we'd like a Bravo clearance to land at San Diego at 3,500 as they uh, instructed us to report. Now, you're not always going to get that same reporting call from approach, but as we've talked about in so many videos, everything is dynamic. Your flight might be different than mine, but it just so happened that today they wanted us to report Mount Soledad at 3,500 feet. That could be due to traffic or whatever the situation is at that time, or it could just even be controller preference. A good way to identify Mount Soledad also is if we bring up the chart one more time, it's directly off the departure end in a west flow alpha Miramar. So we draw a line from Miramar and it hits Mount Soledad. Now, if we look off our left wing right now, we will see that Miramar is directly off the left. So once we get right lined up with those runways, because it's a little bit hard to see down right now, we can dip the wing. Yeah, it's these mountains right beneath us here. So we'll make that report in just a minute. There we go. So we got approach, Diamond Zero Pop Echo, Mount Solid at 3,500. Request uh, clearance into the Bravo, landing San Diego Limburg. Pop Echo cleared into the San Diego Bravo airspace, and I'll have you over to tower in just a second. Cleared to enter the San Diego Bravo airspace, Diamond Zero Pop Echo, thank you. All right, well, there is the big Bravo clearance. That is what we've waited to hear this entire time. Zero is Pop that Echo, can I clip tower 118.3? 118.3, thank you, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. That's what we've, what we've waited to hear this whole time is that big Bravo clearance cleared into the Bravo. That means that we can keep on trekking inbound. We're likely going to get some sort of pattern entry. Now, you might also get some vectors in your flight, maybe an altitude restriction or some vectors. That's all going to be traffic permitting and controller workload permitting. Limburg Tower, Diamond 210 Pop Echo over Mission Bay, 3,400 to land with Victor. 
Diamond 210, Echo Lindbergh Tower. Good afternoon. Enter right now on runway 27. Right down on runway 27, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. And look at that. How easy is that? It's turning into just a normal pattern entry that we've done so many times within these cat ratings. We've got Limburg Airport just off the nose here, and we're already on a beautiful 45 for the right down. Remember, right down means right turns for runway 27. Diamond 210, Pop Echo. Wind 2607, right 27, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 27, Diamond Zero Pop Echo. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, contact ground 123.9 or take care. Contact ground, thanks Diamond 0 Pop Echo. Limber ground, Diamond 210 Pop Echo, clear Charlie 6, taxi to the FBO. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, Limber ground, good evening. Taxi signature via Charlie Hotel. Charlie Hotel over to signature, Diamond 0 Pop Echo, thanks. Diamond 210 Pop Echo, Cat 11 is a pass. Good night. Well, there you have it, a Cat 11 pass. This completes the communication airspace training series on the Pilot Edge Network. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed our journey from the Cat 1 all the way through the Cat 11 and that you've learned a lot along the way. Now, it's really up to you. Using everything you've learned from the Cat 1 through 11, you should now be able to choose two random airports and plan a flight and fly that flight regardless of the type of airspace you're starting in, flying through, or landing in. I encourage you to follow Pilot Edge on social media at Pilot Edge ATC. Additionally, join the Discord live chat community where you can reach thousands of both staff members and pilots from the Pilot Edge community to help you with anything aviation or just to chat and make a new friend. Now what's next you might ask? Well, Unless you already have some instrument experience, I wouldn't go jumping into the IFR things quite yet. Although Pilot Edge does have an IFR training program that's very similar to the CAT ratings, that's called the I ratings. But short of the I ratings, as we already discussed, you can choose any two airports and fly between them, or check out the Alphabet Challenge that Pilot Edge offers. It allows you to have a full itinerary of airports to fly to, and it'll really explore the entire Pilot Edge coverage area. Once again, on behalf of Pilot Edge, thanks for joining us for this journey. We hope you learned a lot, and now take everything. Everything you've learned and go conquer the network. Enjoy your flight, Captain.